Now, NASA's Artemis spacecraft has begun its first orbit of the moon, flying around 130 kilometers above the lunar surface. Scientists face a nervous wait as the Orion capsule then attempts to enter a larger orbit. The vehicle will be out of contact during the maneuver on the far side of the moon. Well, tell us, to tell us more, let's speak to Dr. Jennifer Millard, astrono astronomer and presenter of the Awesome Astronomy podcast. Thank you so much, Dr. Millard, for joining us here on the program. This is so exciting. It is, yeah. Artemis is our return to the moon with people. It's something we haven't done for 50 years, incredibly, not since the days of Apollo. And yeah, so far the mission is going absolutely swimmingly. So yeah, we're very pleased with how it's progressing. And of course, it's it's unmanned at the moment, isn't it? It is, yeah. There are no people on board. It is uncrewed. And that's because Artemis 1, which is this mission, is a test run. So it's a dry run. We needed to fly the rocket to see if it would actually work. And of course, it did beautifully. And now we're testing the capsule to make sure that the conditions on board are going to be suitable for people. So is the temperature OK? Are the radiation levels going to be acceptable? We're also testing all of the maneuverability, testing the solar panels. And then crucially, when this capsule returns to Earth, we're testing that heat shield because coming in from the moon compared to the International Space Station, for example, you're coming at much greater velocities. And that means you're coming in, you're going to be heating up to much greater temperatures. So that heat shield really needs to be tested. But if this all works... Then we're on for Artemis 2 with people. And then Artemis 3 is finally new boot prints on the surface of the moon. And what is the timeline for all of this? Because as you say, this is so far so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. So hopefully if everything goes to plan with Artemis 1, we're looking at 2024 for Artemis 2. So it'll be a very similar mission to Artemis 1, but with people on board the capsule. And then Artemis 3, as long as Artemis 2 goes well, will be 2025. That's the current plan. And I mean, so far, huge investment with this, uh, in this particular uh, spacecraft is, is the biggest that NASA has ever built. Is that correct? It's yeah, it's an astonishing one for for human capabilities. We're going to have uh, four crew on board, which is more than Apollo. It was three crew on board there, and it's only going to get bigger and better from there because we're going to be having the Lunar Gateway, which will be a small space station in orbit around the Moon to support lunar surface activities, and we really are progressing and doing not just long distance space exploration by going to the moon, but combining it with long duration exploration. We're gonna be at the moon for weeks and even months. And all of this is so that we can develop the skills and also the technology that we need to put people on the surface of Mars. Really, that's the ultimate goal of Artemis. And while it, it all looks like it's going smoothly, I mean, this is frankly a, a very difficult mission. It is, yeah. Going to the moon is another level of complexity because, you know, with the International Space Station, we're still cocooned within Earth's protective magnetic field. Whereas when we're going out to the moon and even beyond, because the Orion capsule is going to be soaring 40,000 miles beyond the moon, it's going to be the most distant human rated capsule that it's ever been. And we're exposed to the radiation of deep space out there. And, you know, we can't go and rescue the capsule if something goes wrong. So it is another level of complexity, another level of danger. But to me, it makes it quite exciting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, absolutely. And if you can just briefly help our audience really understand the significance of this moment. It is. It's the first time in 50 years that we've had a human rated capsule actually lose sight of Earth because the capsule briefly went behind the moon and yeah. that's all it could see. Okay. And we're now getting images that are oh, really uh, reminiscent uh, of Unfortunately, we've just come oh, to the end of the me. program, but thank you so much, Dr. Millard.